Hey everybody, Shavo here. Uh, I'm very pleased to announce that 22 Red will be dropping in Las Vegas Friday, July 10th at all of the Essence dispensaries. Uh, we'll carry vapes, flowers, and pre-rolls. Mikey and uh, Morgan Rose and and Rob um, from Nonpoint. It was cool, man. That's cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, we were actually uh, we were talking about you last night because we were talking about um, Mikey was talking about when they started in '94 mm -hmm. or maybe '94, '95 or something like that. They, uh, yeah, we started in '94, but the first show was in '95. Yes. Did you guys open for them? Were they open for you or something? It was vice versa. They opened for us in LA. We opened for them in Santa Barbara because oh. they were the Santa Barbara band. Dude, is there like any footage of that? That would be cool to see. There is, bro. I have, um, I mean, I have videotapes. I just moved them. I, um, I haven't even digitized them. I should do that. I just haven't. If, and there's so many, like hundreds of tapes. I have from DV to like actual VHS to like not eight millimeter of all of that. I documented everything. When there wasn't vlogging, I was vlogging. Um, I was doing all that. You know, I was the one that yeah. Um, I was filming all the snot shows, all our shows, anyone we toured with. I have so many Slayer shows from the first tour on this. Um, I just have yeah. not. I have to go back to them, man. I have all the Ozfests. I have everything. Dude, I, you, um, you guys, your first tour was Slayer and Clutch, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, is it recording now? Is this, we're on? We're just, yeah, we're, yeah, we're on, man. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. right. beautiful. I love it. <laughs> we just go right away. I thought we were just chatting right now. No, uh, I, love this, but I love doing that. Yeah, that's what we are. All right. Um, yeah, what would you say the first tour? Yeah, it was with Clutch and Slayer. But I want to mention, like, once we're done with the whole background stuff, I'd, I'd like to talk about the future. Uh, with, Absolutely, yes. With what I'm dropping. I'm, dro I'm uh, dropping a new group called North Kingsley. I'll tell you about it later. It's pretty cool. Well, we can talk about it now if you want to. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you asked the question, so. Um, sure. Yeah, let, let's go back first, then talk forward. Um, yeah, it was with uh, our first ever tour was Clutch and Slayer, man. That was, a, that was crazy. Um, that, that's amazing. How did the um, like opening for Slayer has always been a? How'd you guys go with the uh, the crowd? Well, that was crazy because we at the time no one knew who we were, and um, and we were wearing makeup. So oh. you know, we ended up opening up for Slayer, and we were playing songs like Sugar, you know. Yeah. So um, we started off on the East Coast, and it went. It was not good. Um, <laughs> we got, I, actually started off in Arizona, and. Um, we were having weird, it was weird, man. Like the crowds in certain places just boo you if you're not Slayer, you know? Right. Um, and then, um, yeah, like Philly, I remember Philly was really horrible. They, they totally just try to boo us off the stage, but that's the thing, we never left. We would just keep playing and keep playing. And um, when we went, they also took us to Europe the first time with Slayer oh. and it was Sepultura and Slayer. And oh, so that's cool. Up, up, tour and Slayer, and it's like, fuck, bro. That was boot camp. You know what I mean? Was it? Oh, that was boot camp. We did some crazy shit up there because, um, I mean, there were shows where the audience would get crazy to turn around. Like, here's the here's our backs. We don't care yeah. about you. Bring Slayer on. Dude, and we'd play. That's crazy. We'd, yeah, we would just play. And um, we've had, like, Poland, I remember, they threw uh, bagels at us and bottles that coins they were throwing those big european coins that wiping us i still have some scars over here really being hit by them yeah which was all it did was um was get me amped you know because it's like yeah oh, dude, i'm gonna play 10 times harder to make you love me because you're fans of the bands that i'm in lo i love and i'm a fan of so we're the same i probably boo whoever on was on right now too so uh -huh. i'm on so i was never getting offended it was more of this, like, what do we do to, like, win them over, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I swear the few times, like, okay, we had, like, six, seven Germany shows. And back then, like, we, we were never out. In, like, we, we hadn't dropped in Germany yet. Nothing had happened with us there. So we were just this unknown band wearing makeup and uh, singing weird songs. And our singer, ooh, you know, doing all sorts of weird shit. Um, so um, we played the first song. There was, like, 
crickets. Like I'm talking about, it felt like the lights were on and we were in a cafeteria or somewhere in school. <laughs> like, it was like nothing, you know? And, uh, and I can hear like talking. You can hear it because it's so quiet. So uh, we look and we played the same song over again. No way. Yeah, we did the same song three, four times till they realized, wait, they're just playing the same fucking song. So they got, they started laughing. And when they laughed, we played the third or fourth song. We went into like sweet pee and like, bah, and all of a sudden they just started hitting and we knew what to do. So once we did that mm. time, we did it often. We, like any, anytime we got no response, we're like, all right, play it again. <laughs> so, and then we know like if it's a heavy crowd, I mean, at that point, this is something we used to say. We used to say that since we can open for Slayer now, we can do the Lilith Fair if we wanted to. We can do whatever we wanted to do. Because it was like, we could be out of our uh, elements and kind of do something to win you over, you know? And um, it was cool, man. It, it Whose was idea cool. was that to play the song over and over again? I mean, did you guys plan that? I think we read somewhere that um, Mike Patton did that. Oh, I love Mike Patton. Oh, so, yeah, us too, bro. We're big fans. And, you know, when we got to tour with him and uh, Mr. Bungle, that was rad too, you know? Oh, amazing we've done so many great things tours and stuff i just did it's sad we're not doing all that nowadays you know what i mean but um yeah, you know, yeah man but you guys are still you guys are still killing it though like whenever you do play i was watching an armenia show from 2015 that was yeah. amazing we were supposed to do that this year i was going to be uh we were in europe at the moment that's where we were going to be but um it, it didn't work out because of covid yeah uh, so we're postponing uh, i think 60 70 percent of those shows to next year so um yeah, I think we're doing Armenian next year. We're going to play a show there again, same place. Oh, that's cool. Street, yeah. yeah. Um, have, you ever, have you ever thought about, like, I love all these stories and everything. Would you ever write a book or anything like that? Because I love, yeah. like, audio books and stuff. I'm big into that. I'm actually looking into it because it's not just that. It's um, the whole story of, like, because I'm not from, I'm, I mean, I'm from here, but I'm not, I'm not born in America. Um, I was born in Armenia. And, you know, Armenia, there's like a whole genocide. And if we start there and you trail my great grandparents and how they met and just make that quick, you know, and like show mm -hmm. how that guy that was a survivor turned, had a kid who moved to America at four years old and then loved music and got all crazy and like saw Kiss play. And then, yeah. the next thing you know, like I got, I started working at a bank and I do this and I just working hard and started system and, you know, and the rest is history that we can start talking about how system was and then how I did 22 red and how and then the, 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 the present and the future is still coming, you know? So, I'm Dude, that sounds like a book. documentary, man. Yeah, I'm still I, writing a book that you could talk about. Like, you could totally mention it from day one, you know, and it could be really cool. Uh, Dude, that, oh, that's sick. I love that, man. You know, have, um, some, uh, have, have them talk to, like, my mom. She could say a lot of stuff. Like, you know, some, some family members could shed a lot of light on stuff. <laughs> yeah, know? dude. So I, I have thought of it. I have thought of it. Dude, uh, happy uh, early Father's Day, by the way, too. Oh, man. thank you, bro. This weekend. Yeah, bro. It's a... Uh, Father's Day is in, before Father's Day was like for my father, which is still, you know, but uh, I have three kids. Oh, okay. So, so they are ages. I have um, an eight year old, a six year old, they're both boys, and then I have a two year old girl. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm like in love right now. That's the kind <laughs> of thing you don't know about until you have it, you know, and that anyone that's a dad or a mom knows what I'm talking about. It's just, uh, see, I got a big smile on my face right when I yeah. start with my kids, you know? Um, yeah, bro, that's that's just a love that I've never thought I could have, you know. Yeah, you dude, I got an eight. Someone you fall in love with, you, you have your parent family love, you know. You know you love your parents when you're a kid. Like you can't, you know, like, you can't think of life without them. And then you have friends you love, you have girlfriends you love, and you have your wife you love, and then you have these children. And that love, I don't know. That's a love I didn't know. About, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, that's amazing. Apple, I was just watching TV. Uh, Apple TV has a, a documentary called Dads you should check out. Oh, it yeah, just came out like today or something, but it's it's cool. awesome. Dude, but anyway, yeah, I got an eight-year-old uh, daughter as well and, uh, and a son. Yeah, he's seven. So my, our kids are almost the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah six and seven and, yeah, the, seven and eight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's cool. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's great, man. God bless. Thank you, brother. Um, So... You want to talk about the uh, 22 Red, man? That's pretty cool. You got your own cannabis thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know where to start it. Uh, I have this really good friend I've had for like my whole life since I was maybe eight years old, nine years old. Our dad mm -hmm. used to be friends, you know, that kind of friend that's always been there. Uh, even though like every year we weren't like the best of friends, but he was always in my life, you know. Well, years passed, we got really close. 
Um, and uh, he has a uh, clothing manufacturing uh, 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 business uh, called Made, Madewell LA uh, in, in Hollywood. And um, so we've always talked about doing this, some kind of brand, some kind of clothing. Um, Cause I, you know, I, I love to brand. Like when system started, I was the one that, you know, did the stickers, went to Kinko's, made, I took, I took the picture of the guy tied up. I put it, you know, oh, yeah. I, you know, I made that to flyers, the stickers, and then I did the cover for the album. And then not the, the, the demo, uh, all, I went, we had three demos, did three different covers. I, it's just a lot of branding. I didn't know I was branding, but that's what branding is nowadays. It's called branding. I didn't know that before. Yeah. So doing what it takes to, to make your brand, your band or brand come to life, you know, for people to experience it the way you see it in your head. So, I've always want love doing that, and uh, it's kind of my niche. So uh, we've always talked about having a brand together, something you know where he can use his talents, I could use mine, and we can push it forward. You know, uh, we we started talking about that in 2017. More, uh, it was coming to fruition, so we started something, and then our third partner came in, Sean, who um, who's like a master grower. He's um, He's a contractor. Like he, he's, he does. He builds the grows. He, he's built some of the most legendary grows in LA that are in their high, like heyday now. You know what I mean? He's done that back in the day. Um, he's been doing this for like 15 years. Uh, so, and I always knew him. He was also like really close to all of us, but I just didn't know what extent he was doing it in. You know, like I, right. I just thought he had he had a grow in his backyard or like his garage or something. When um, and then my friend Mike, the guy that does the clothing, my first partner, um, he's like, yo, man, let's, let's go check out his grows. You know, maybe we involve cannabis because it's like becoming legal, you know, and uh, recreational legal. I, just, I, I never really, I've, I've been asked to do cannabis my whole life. Like not my whole life, since, since I've been smoking. Yeah. My 20s and on. Like, oh, let's, let's brand, a, let's make sh the Shavo strain and the Shavo G and this and that. With your name in it, right? My name in it. And I'm, yeah. Just, you know, I just want to smoke it, man. I, I, I don't drink too much. I, you know, I, I smoke, man. I don't do other things. I don't smoke cigarettes. I used to. I have stopped everything. All I do is smoke. Um, and uh, I just, ne I never wanted to be a part of that. But once I saw what he can do and what he's doing, I was like, bro, this could be perfect because everything I want to do is quality. It was like not about the quantity. We, I like more boutique. Uh, I'd rather have something that shines than a lot of some things that don't, right? Right. Uh, so he just matched that whole thing. It was like the quality was there. His strains were amazing. Uh, the people he was associated with were really cool. Um, so we kind of brought him in and said, you know, he didn't expect for us to make him an equal partner. I was like, bro, it's the incentive, you know, like you, you jump in, let's go, you know? And um, what year was this? When did this start? When you got with it? 17. Oh, okay. So yeah, about it's been going. Yeah, about three years ago, we started it, but it wasn't nothing we were doing legally. Like we, we didn't sell anything yet. We were just talking and doing, we were making shirts, but we didn't have 22 red yet. We were, we had this other idea. Um, then we teamed up with some other people that were branders that like that they do that for a living and we kind of, I just kind of like wanted to see what any, everyone else would do because I really didn't want to do like Shavo, the name in it. I didn't want it to be a part of me. I want I mean, I wanted to be a part of me, but I didn't want it to be me. Right. You know? uh, I wanted to be able to build something that could stand on its own without the help of Shavo. Even wow, that's cool. Even though I'm an owner yeah. and a founder, but I didn't want it to be another celebrity brand. There's too many out there yeah. that are doing well. They just kind of give their name away to people and trust them to do everything. And you know, it's a, having a, Weed brand is a dime a dozen at this point. Everybody has it because you can. There's all these companies that grow in white label and they just say, okay, give me your name, make a sticker, put it on a jar. Here's our weed that we put on every other jar. We're just going to call yours different. You know, and mm -hmm. then they rename the same brand, the same strain over and over and over again. Yeah. You just become one of many, which doesn't really shine. Um, so we did it differently. We, uh, I don't know. So 22, we were thinking of names and these guys had come up with crazy names that I was, wasn't about, you know, like weird shit. Like I'm not yeah. going to, uh, <laughs> so I, I was like, let me come into your meetings. Um, be, before you present me something, do you have a meeting? Correct. You're like, yeah, let me come into that meeting. So just, I don't like being presented shit. I'm, I'm a creator. I'm, I'm a collaborator and a creator. So, um, 30 minutes in, into that meeting, 
they're like, so we, I started talking about 22 is always my, it's been around me. It's been my lucky number. It's, it's, it's been with me since I was born. It's, it's the date of my birth, you know, it's uh, yeah. we're 22. Um, and so. So you took, yeah, yeah, 20, yeah. yeah, 22 is a big deal. My kids, my boys, they're born two years, 22 days apart. Can you believe oh, that? Wow. I'm married May 22nd. I'm born April 22nd. I was 22 when the system got picked up. Uh, that was 22 years before I was 44 when I thought of this. So that's 22 times two. Crazy, right? Yeah, uh, that's awesome. We were talking about the, tw the twos, and, and then and then I started talking about this whole thing where I uh, I have synesthesia. I didn't even know it was a name. I just thought of every, everyone related colors and numbers. Uh, I'm sorry, numbers and letters and things with colors. I always did. I don't know why. Like two, all colors, all numbers. <laughs> have colors for in, in my head since I could remember. I didn't know everyone, was, I didn't know everyone was like, wasn't like that, you know? Uh -huh. So when I was talking about that, one of the guys in there, Dan, he goes, so what color is two? And I said, red. And he goes, and I went, 22 red. And now, boom, there was it. So uh -huh, I, never looked back. Yeah, I never looked back. Um, That's crazy. I've right? never heard of it. That's wild, man. It's a cool thing, though. It's just, it's yeah, it I love like, it. All, the, all numbers from one to zero, one to 10, have, have colors for every number, you know, I don't know. And the letters too, alphabet, there's like A is red. I don't know why. It's just weird, right? Yeah, so, dude. Um, it is what it is. Um, it, so uh, it's just an association, I guess, meant a brain association thing. Anyway, so that's how that was born. And we uh, started making some nice clothing. We made just shirts and hoodies. I uh, just, I wanted it to be things I could live in. So we made, we got the softest material, did cool things. We just buy it, put a name on it and sell it. Is we it made out of hemp? All this stuff. No, no, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Okay. But I, there are really good hemp companies now, clothing companies that I might yeah. do a collab with real quick, do something, you know, drop like specific things, but not like, I, I can't depend on my whole line being a hemp. You know, I just, I got right. the fabric. I have, since we have the factory, we actually have them add stuff to it, not just, you know, a screen print and here you go. You know, we actually have little tags we put, we put messages inside the clothes. We have little cool sayings about 22, just it's a brand thing. You know, it's more about the creative mind, you know? Yeah. Uh, how can people find, uh, how can people find it online? Is, what's oh, the web called? 22red.com. You can, um, we're right now, we're not in construction, but the CBDs are all sold out, but we have, C oh, we yeah. have based CBD. Um, that uh, is legal in 50 states, but we just sold out of everything, so we're redoing it all. Um, that's a good problem, man. Being sold yeah, out. that's a great problem. No, it's a good because you know, also with that, too, it's also the quality of everything, man. It's not just the clothing that I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, but to answer the question, you can find, I think, you can find three, two colors of the hoodies and one color of the shirt right now online at, at 22 Red. Uh, we're gonna soon drop a whole line of like really cool. Uh, things uh apparel you know oh that's cool man i i love that i, I love the cbd man that stuff's awesome dude it like really it, works if if, if, yeah. if you have the right amount of cbd in the vape or in the tincture or in the gummy if you have the right amount there's really an effect recently <laughs> i'm noticing that a lot of companies are coming out um talking about that everyone has a cbd company because you could do it right everything has right. CBD in it I, I just came back from my gym and you know, I'm so happy to be back. I haven't got, <laughs> I have not been able to go to the gym for three months. Yeah, right. So That's awesome. Every product now they have CBD in it. I'm like, fuck. But then I look in, on the on the actual uh, container, and the CBD is like five percent. Like you're not gonna feel shit with five percent. Um, I found a good percentage uh, that you can put into other, the, you know, uh, your jars and your uh, your pens that. Is that okay? So I really put a lot at first, and it crystallized, and you couldn't really you could smoke two puffs, and all of a sudden it's crystallized CBD because I put like 75, 80 percent CBD. Oh, I was like, wow. put the most, you know, put as yeah. much as you can. They're like, but you're not gonna make so much money. I'm like, at the, it's not about money at the moment. It's about building a fucking brand that's like quality. Yeah. You, know, like you want them? I'm not gonna give something to someone and say smoke this. It works when I know it doesn't. You know what I mean? So that just wouldn't be right. Um, so I, uh, so we went. 5% lower, 5%. We got it to like 56 to seven where it does not, it does not crystallize at all. And it stays clean. And of course it's tested, pesticide free, everything free, heavy metal free, everything free, heavy metal free. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say something. That's funny. Guy, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, man. And we have these pens that anyone that, plus we have all the terps that we use, the flavors we use. We actually 
we, we have this guy that uh, his name is Marcus. I want to give him a big shout out. His, he has a brand called Nature's Lab. Amazing. One of the greatest like um, uh, extract brands. He's, he, he, make, he makes sauce and uh, diamonds and like, he's just amazing, man. Oh, cool. Uh, um, yeah. So he was a friend of mine before there was business going on, you know? So I said, of course, I'm going to use my friend, right? The, you know, I knew he was great, but I didn't know how great. So he's been a partner also. He's come in and he's helping us with all that. So what he does is he actually gets, he's steamed, it's, all the turps are steamed direct. So if you're having strawberry, if, it's, if it says strawberry, it's actual strawberry steamed, turp taken out, chemical, whatever, put in. And yeah, actually, that sounds legit. Yeah, you're actually tasting strawberries. You're not tasting artificial strawberries. That's, I mean, you guys sound so professional. It sounds Thank just you. legit. I love that. Well, it has to be, bro, or else this is a game that you can't join if you don't get all involved in. You can't, that's what I'm saying. Most celebrity right. brands, they give their name and have people do it, and they don't know exactly what's going on. You know, They don't know what's, what's happening in, with their products. And if I'm going to stand there and I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to do interviews like this and podcasts and go online and talk about it, then I better know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, or else yeah. I'm, I'll be a fake ass, and I don't – that's – one thing that I pride myself to not be, <laughs> you know, and if, <laughs> you know, and if I don't know it, I don't do it, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. claim it. I just the way of life, bro. You know? Um, so what's up with this? Uh, you, you got a new band you're working on now? Yeah, no, bro. Um, uh, about a, two years ago, well, for a bit, bro, I've been like searching for something to do and I used to do everything myself. This is my little home studio where I work yet. Nice. Um, I usually been doing my, and then, but, but I didn't for a while. And I used to work on Pro Tools. And um, so one thing led to another. And I hit up a friend who had a studio. I was like, man, I've, I've never worked with this guy. And I've known him for so long. Maybe I should go in there and we should jam and stuff. Well, we went. I went. I got together. And it just didn't work out. You know, it was more of like, let's just remain friends. and let's. Not. But I met some people at the studio that knew. The, the, they had a little thing going on, a little project. Um, and, one of, and they both knew Logic Pro, the, the program. Uh, really well and they got me into it and I, I was like you know maybe I should just take this on myself and so I had them give me lessons one of the guys was giving me lessons logic lessons at, at my studio and yeah. he would come down and he would teach me what to do one thing again let's see this is like the best things happen by not planning you know one mm -hmm. thing led to another and we did a track like we did a beat that was just like fuck that sounds so good and he sat down and he's like yeah we can add this and, blah, blah, blah. and all of a sudden it just became like we bonded you know yeah, and I was, when we heard. I was like, "Dude, this is sick!" We can, and it happened so fast. I was like, "Let's do another one." We did another one quick, and I was like, "This could be something cool." But it was still a time where, you know, I'm, a, I was, I'm like, "Dude, I'm." I, it's it's hard to say I have another band. <laughs> you know, I haven't said that before. I just, you know, I had a project with RZA, the RZA from Wu Tang. I did called the Chosen, but that was just a project. It okay. was something I swear by. We were gonna go on tour. Um, since the system's not working a lot, we're not making any music lately, <laughs> lately, so 12 years, yeah, uh, or even longer. I, I have a lot coming out, man, a lot, a lot of riffs, a lot of bass lines, a lot of guitar licks, and a lot of beats, a lot of ideas, and so, I don't know, we just started working, and then Ray came in, the singer, he was already working with him, but I, the, the initial idea was to make beats for other artists, as in like, we'll be like a chain smokers, but a heavy chain smokers. Like we can make all these crazy beats with crazy bass yes. that no one else thinks of, my patterns, my rhythm patterns that I have in my head. And uh, we can give them away to other vocalists and we can put an album together like a DJ Khaled and getting all my friends who sing and we yeah. can or rap or whatever and put them on. Cause it is hip hop, it has a hip hop edge. It has like trap beats, uh, but it's got like the heavy guitars sometimes. It's not rap rock cause it's, it's got trap in there. It just has this heavy element. It's weird. It's something new that I can't I wait to hear that. That sounds I can't awesome. Wait to hear either. So um, Ray came in and he threw a verse, and I was like, "Fuck, dude, that's him!" Like, <laughs> and then he just started going. His he really um, his thoughts align with mine. So mm -hmm. the words he's using, and he's a very literal, very uh, politically, socially aware. Um, it's kind of like the next place to go from system it was like you know serge said a lot of stuff that i believed in and then i kind of went in my own thing you know now mm -hmm. i feel like this is another way and it's like he's so great ray where i can like i can give him a topic i'll be like listen this happened to me at the gym the other day like oh, okay crazy. got what you a, a confrontation or he'll take that and he'll write a straight song about it like 
is it like this? I'm like, fuck, bro, this is such a great situation, you know? Because that's awesome, dude. So it's not all politics. So it's just every no, no, no. joke around this, that. Just kind of like what we did with System was really cool. We went kind of quirky yet we were serious. Um, We don't take sides on this band. In in this band, we're not trying to be all left. We're not trying to be all right. We're not trying to be anything except tell you what's going on and tell you our opinions and our views on what's going on. Real, pretty simple. so, dude, he started doing it, started doing it, and I kind of, I had asked a bunch of people to be on it, and I kind of stopped asking. I was like, <laughs> uh-huh. something with this guy, you know, and it can be yeah. an actual band, because I was always worried about performing. I was like, how do we perform if we have 12 vocalists? Like, how am I going to get these 12 guys in the same place at the same time? There's always going to be something missing. Right. This way, we got this thing now, like a trifecta going, it works. Um, and I, so once we had like 12 songs, I started, I'm like, how do we drop this? I could have gone the regular route and like shopped it, mm-hmm. got a label distribution to take it the easy way. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna invest in myself, just like I did in 22. I'm like, right about now, what else do I invest in? Me invest in myself. Uh, it's my play, you know, I put all, it's like I'm the record company also. I'm hiring the marketing company. I'm hiring, I'm, I'm paying for everything. The record's all on us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, doing everything on my own. I hired a publicist. Uh, just, I did what a label would have done on my own, and I got an in, in, independent distribution deal. Um, so I s- kept most of our percentages, you know, instead of yeah. giving it away like we did in the system. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> not literally, but you know what I mean. When a big yeah, company only comes to you when you're a little baby band, you don't have much choice, you know? Right. Um, so where was I? Let me see. No, that's cool. Oh, yeah, the yeah, marketing people- style. The market yeah. style, I decided instead of dropping 12 songs at once, because nowadays it's like, there's a lot of ADD going on, you know, mm-hmm. you have a cell phone that you can do 30,000. Yeah, people lose right yeah, no attention. Yeah. So it's like, you can't focus. So I decided, I go, why don't I do three, 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 like drop 12 songs within a year, do three songs every three, four months, mm-hmm. uh, with videos, every song gets a visual, a video, some lyric stuff. And uh, with it, because I still love the whole clothing thing, I'm like, let's do like limited merch let's have some really cool ideas with like visuals that we can create for the, each song like an iron maiden no iron maiden there was eddie eddie was yeah. on there was like the peace of mind eddie but there was also the trooper eddie a song off of peace of mind so i love that so uh, that's awesome so we thought of stuff like that and we we're kind of in the middle of designing all that we got a cool merch company that's helping us um so yeah so is, bro, it, is the merch going to be like like the same quality as like the red 22 with like the soft shirts that's the plan it needs to be but i don't know about just the softness i really you know some shirts you what you buy you wash three times there's already like little things hanging and yeah lose you get uh unless that's what i'm going for i'm gonna make i'm making sure everything's top notch and quality and i'd be wearing it i'm gonna be wearing it you know Mm -hmm. so if i uh, if i I wouldn't wear it all day then i don't want to sell it you know yeah absolutely how so can people find you uh, uh, i guess on social media for north Kingsley. Yeah, yeah. Us, all we have at the moment, we have an Instagram, uh, but I have gotten all the other handles for the YouTube. When we start dropping the videos, we have the YouTube. We we're gonna do a we're gonna do a TikTok. We're not gonna be dancing, but we're gonna <laughs> get <laughs> cool content for TikTok because we're a content group too. Like we film all our practices. We're filming That's all, cool. all the making ofs when we're recording in our studio. There's a camera on, so we're getting our interactions, and we have. I mean, we're alike but very different like so different that like we we might be saying the same thing but all of a sudden there'll be like a weird moment and then I love, <laughs> at, at first i was like turn the camera off now i'm like no keep it going bro like <laughs> this is yeah, gonna man. be fun afterwards you know what to watch so yeah, awesome. yeah we have a lot of cool things coming up man oh uh, with this covid are you gonna you guys gonna do like a live stream or something like a, a concert 100 percent. we're already planning on where and how and uh when i dropped the first three I'll play stuff off the second three also. So we could do like a five, six song introduction. That's, cool. that's to, you know, and uh, I'm just looking forward to doing that too. Cause I really, really, really love being on stage, love playing, love to perform. And uh, I'm just so used to, you know, I miss it, man. It's yeah. just do enough, you know, I wish we toured at least a couple of times a month. I mean, a year, like a couple of months, a year would have been fucking grand, but it takes four to I know, right? When you yeah. were in System, did you, um, when you were in System of Down, did you design a lot of the artwork and stuff? I mean, because it sounds like you're, 
All the intro stuff, yeah, the, in, in the beginning. And then we also got Darren's dad involved. He did a, a, the covers for Hypnotize and Mesmerize. That was him. Yeah. I, um, I had the concept for, like, the toxicity. I had that idea. I didn't actually draw it out myself. But I, we were having a problem. Here, I'll tell you a quick story. So we were sure. coming up with a name. We were at the studio. We were recording Toxicity. But there wasn't even a song named Toxicity. It was the song I brought in was called, uh, we had named it um, 7.0 because... <laughs> because AOL at the time was on five point something. Hey guys, so we just, I just got done interviewing Chavo from System of a Down. And as you can tell, we lost connection for the last, we lost about 10 minutes of footage. Uh, it stinks, but you know what happens. Next time, um, that won't happen. I don't know, <laughs> find a way, I'll hit pause or something, we'll come back to it. But we lost about 10 minutes, which is, isn't too bad, but the, the the time we lost was just basically Chavo was talking about filming some of the system of down videos and, and toxicity in particular where they do a freeze screen and they were having issues trying to get the screen to freeze. So they all, they faked it. So they basically, they all just, and if you watch, they said, um, uh, uh, Serge's hand moves a little bit. So everybody go back and watch that video and try to try to notice it, I guess. Anyway, thank you, Chavo, for the interview. I, it was a true honor. Thank you so much. I had a blast. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you again.